So in this video, we're going to cover how to make a discounted cash model in Google Sheets. So the first thing we're going to have to do is find the cost of equity. We'll use CAFM for that. I'll explain that in a second. The second thing we're going to have to do is find the cost of debt. The third thing, we'll weight those two, and that'll give us a weighted average cost of capital. Four, we'll discount the future cash flows by the weighted average cost of capital. So the weighted average cost of capital is how much it takes a company, how much it costs for them to borrow money. Um, we'll buy, we'll add the terminal value back in, value past the forecast period. Six, that'll give us our final calculation for fair value, fair value per share. So the formula for CAPM, capital asset pricing model, is the risk-free rate, which is 10-year government bonds, uh, plus the beta times the market return minus the risk-free rate. So the market return is essentially what you expect um, the entire stock market to return. So maybe 8% a year. Usually I would use the historical average for the S&P 500 uh, for that. So I'll go over all of that in this video. Step one to building this discounted cash flow model would be to enter the ticker symbol of whatever company you're looking at. Um, we can use Apple as an example. If we pull, we got, we'll have to pull a few things here, um, like shares outstanding, shares outstanding. That's how many pieces the business is sliced into, divided into. Um, we'll, we will use for that equals Google Finance, equals Google Finance. The cell Apple is in, comma, um, parentheses, shares, just like that. Uh, and I, will, I usually divide this by 100,000 usually to make it more manageable, easy to work with. I'll use, I put all of this into accounting. So it's easier to see here. Okay, um, let's see here. Next thing would be to put in revenue. Revenue, current revenue. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, let's just say Apple had 100,000. Um, make this simple. Okay, revenue, and let's say they had a conversion rate to free cash flow so I guess I would just put that as cash flow conversion conversion rate conversion rate uh, let's just say they had a conversion rate of uh, 30% okay and we ex and revenue growth revenue growth is around 15% a year Okay, um, so what we would do is we project out every single year. So let's go one, two, three, four, five out for the years. Let's put them all in the middle, and we'll change this just to a standard number with no decimals. Okay, so we would so year one we'll just use the current revenue. Year two, I have to make this all. Did I type here? Okay, equals, nope, oh, okay, equals revenue. So, and then we'll have to project out, um, so, so year one would be this year. So we do this 100,000 times one plus the uh, revenue growth, B6. We have to put a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 6 to lock it in. So that'd be 115,000, and it'll project this all out, autofill. Let's go ahead and do accounting. There we go. And, okay, from there, let's say they had that 30% conversion rate. So what we'll do equals the revenue, or, yep, times the conversion rate, uh, 30%. So B5 with the dollar sign in front of it once again. And this will show us how much. Okay, so if they if they were to grow at fifteen percent and thirty percent hit the bottom line, then they'd have fifty two thousand in five years from the thirty thousand they have now, in terms of annual uh, free cash flow. Um, from there, though, we would have to discount this back, so we'll have to we'll have to apply a discount rate, uh, discount rate, discount rate. Actually, we'll use the weight average cost of capital here. Same thing. Um, one second. So. To find the weight average cost of capital, what we're going to dis discount all of these uh, free cash flows by. By the end, at the end, we'll have to also have to add in a terminal value. Um, 
the weight average cost of capital will have to do cap M and uh, so that, that will be our equity essentially that will be the equity cost of equity here so we'll, we will do the risk free rate did I put that in here yet? no I didn't okay risk free rate free rate of 4% and then I have to pull the beta as well for this um, so the beta uh, equals Google Finance cell comma beta just like that and then the formula is the risk is the risk free rate the risk free rate plus the beta times one I mean the market return uh, let's say the market return is 8%. Let me put that in here. Market return, 8% times the market return minus the risk-free rate would be the cap M. So their cap M is 9%. Put that right in the middle. So cap M is 9. 9% here. Uh, and then for the debt weighting, um, okay, let's just put this on the side as well. Um, we'll just put that here. Move this over. Grab this formula. This is very simple. Okay. And we'll put the cap M right here. Paste this over here. So there's that 9%. I'll put the decimal on to see. There. 8.96%. Okay. And then let's say the debt. Let's put the debt uh, down here, I guess. Debt. Uh, cost of debt here. So this will depend on the interest. Uh, how much interest they have and how much debt they have. So let's see here. They uh, how much did I have them doing here? Thirty thousand a year for free cash flow. So let's say they had debt of twenty thousand, um, and they had interest of let's say interest of maybe five thousand. Well, let's say three thousand. Yeah, three thousand. Three thousand a year. And then we, let's say they had a tax rate, a tax rate, effective tax rate after all their deductions and everything of maybe 15%. Uh, so the tax rate is 15%. So the cost, cost of debt would equal the interest divided by the debt times 1 minus the effective tax rate of 15%. So that gives us 12.75%. And they can deduct interest from the from their taxes. That's why we deduct tax rate here. Uh, i got to put that in, in uh, accounting. So cost of debt is 12.75%. Cap M is 8.96%. So we come down here. Um, let's come over here. Cost of debt is this 12.75%. You can just use equals. And let's say the cost of equity, or just say cap M, capital asset pricing model, is 8.96. So they're paying, so this is a high interest scenario here. Um, so from here, we'd have to know how much equity there is. So the market cap is what we're going to use for, for the equity. I'm going to divide this again. Okay. Actually, I guess we don't really need to. Okay. So the equity... So total equity is 159,000. Okay, let's put the equity in here. I'll just put market cap. Bring this over here again. Bring this over here. 159. Actually, we don't even need to do that. Okay, let's say equity. Equity here. And the debt. Here. Total debt, 20000 So debt would factor what percentage, or equity would factor what percentage. So equity plus this divided by the equity. So take equity, add the debt, divided by the equity. Minus 1. Twelve point seven five percent No, sorry. Take the equity, add the debt. Oh, sorry. You take the equity, 
and then you divide it by the total debt and equity there. Okay, 88% would be the weighting. I gotta get to find, I gotta make this a percentage. Okay, debt would be factored as the same thing, divided by total debt and equity. Uh, so, let's, okay, so to percentage, okay. And then we would take, essentially what we would do to find the weighted average cost of capital, very simple example here, we would take the equity weighting and multiply that by the cost of equity, and then add in the cost of debt times the equity, the, the debt weighting. Um, and that would give us our total cost of capital. So this is what it costs the company to borrow, effectively. Uh, and this is what shareholders expect. This is weighting, weighted here. Okay. So 9.38% would what is what we would use for the WAC. We'll use okay, so we'd have to discount all of these by that weighted average cost of capital. So we'd have to take thirty thousand uh, divided by one, one plus the discount rate e one e uh, dollar sign in front of both of them, and raise that to the year. So okay, and then we would project this out essentially every single year. And this is how much that money is worth to us today. So this fifty-two thousand dollars. Apple return the data. Ugh, I don't know why it's glitching. One second. Okay, and they got that glitch fixed. Okay, so now. With this WAC, we're going to, we projected all these out here. Um, okay, and the formula is right here. If you need to see it, it's right here. Um, okay, and then we're going, to act, we're going to calculate the terminal value here as well. So for that terminal value, we're going to have to find the terminal value growth rate, which is, which is basically what you expect the economy, economy to grow indefinitely. Um, because if a company grows faster than the economy forever, then eventually it becomes bigger than the economy, and that's not physically possible. So TV, terminal value, growth rate, growth rate, let's say 2%. I always use 2%. You can use 2.5%, maybe 3%. Um, I think 2% is the most conservative. So we're going to take the last cash flow, uh, which would which would have already been discounted, this 33000 and we're going to multiply it by 1 plus, let's see, where is it over here? The terminal value, where is it at? Terminal growth rate, and divide that by the where is it at? Uh, oh, weight average cost of capital minus the growth rate, and that gives us our terminal value. This is what the firm is worth after the forecasted period. In order to find the total value. Or the value per share, value per share, uh, we would take the total, we would take the total terminal value, and we would add the sum of all the cash flows projected. Okay, and value, 516,000, and we would do the shares, shares outstanding, which already pulled those. Value per share would just be the value of the total firm divided by how many slices it's, it is sliced into. So that would give us a three dollar and twenty cents value. Now I did I did a lot of uh, division here to make this more uh, workable, um, and I don't and I didn't pull Apple's current revenue. Um, this is just an example here. Um, if I was to input Apple's real numbers, actually I'll be right back. I'll grab those. So I went ahead and pulled Apple's revenue here. And the conversion rate for them, the cash flow conversion rate, um, I put that in. So you can put in, you can use any number. You don't even have to use a company specifically. You can do anything you want. You can just, if you want to value a business, you're looking to buy anything. Um, it doesn't have to be a publicly traded company. So I put in Apple's revenue here, and um, I just divided it only by a thousand because this number is also in thousands and it has to be consistent. Let's take the decimals away, and I projected these out.
um, I just, I mean, I, this is a, this is all automated. All I did is I put the revenue in, I put the conversion rate in, revenue growth rate, um, and really that's that's about it because the shares are pulled, the beta's pulled. So, um, well, I guess you would need to put the interest in the debt, debt here. Um, that's about it. Uh, so let's see. You pro I projected all these out. Uh, you saw me do that. Uh, I just put in their revenue and this changed it. Um, okay, and then I this is a terminal value, same same formula here, and we so we added the terminal value with all of the cash flows for the next five years and what they're worth to us today. So essentially, what this means is this not this hundred fifty million dollars are gonna make you're paying ninety seven million, or this is what bondholders and stockholders currently expect to receive. That you know this okay, uh, based off what I projected out here, uh, and the weight average cost of capital. So even though they're growing, growing, making more money every single year, all of them are worth slightly less every single year to us, um, because money in five years isn't isn't worth as much as it is to, as it is today. We want to see some type of return. So based off of all of that, then we shouldn't pay more than one hundred and one dollars and twenty three cents for Apple. So let's see, and we can put their current price in. Current price that would just be equals Google Finance, and then we put the ticker symbol. And the current price is one hundred and forty one eighty six, so uh, you we'd have this stock would have to come down down at least forty dollars to make it worth our while. Uh, Apple's always traded at a premium, probably always will, um, but even with an eight percent growth rate, it doesn't really make sense for us to really be looking at this right now. It's something to keep on your watch list, but I don't think uh, it's a very good investment at this rate at this point in time. I think it's trading way too rich. Even, even still, after it came down a little bit. Hope this has been informative. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me or leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you.